Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Mohammed, and today we're gonna be discussing what's a new in .NET Aspire Preview 4. .NET Aspire Preview 4 has been released last week with a lot of new changes, a lot of new enhancements. So let's go through the list of the new changes that has been introduced and then we're gonna be seeing how we can actually upgrade our .NET Aspire which is currently on .NET Preview 3 to .NET Preview 4 so we can take advantage of all of these new enhancements. So let's get started. So what I have here is the release page which has been published for .NET Aspire Preview 4 and as we can see the biggest support that actually gonna came out which is the podman support and podman if you're not aware is an alternative to docker which basically allows you to containerize your application without actually having a daemon running on your machine and i have a full video which goes into podman i'll link it here somewhere where you can actually go and watch it and actually be able to see how we can actually utilize podman in order for us to containerize our application and now seeing podman is actually coming to aspire is a really really good step forward into that and basically removing the dependency on docker so the other main update is going to be on the dashboard when it comes to the dashboard there's a lot of new updates when it comes to the look and feel of the dashboard and how we can actually interact with it so from the preview here we can see there's a lot of more information that we can actually see and if we go down a bit more we can see now the dashboard can actually run independently from aspire where we can actually run a container image of the dashboard and actually run it and connect it to our application and this is going to be a really interesting to experiment with so we can see here by utilizing the nightly version of the .NET aspire dashboard preview 4 we can actually download it and run it locally and we can see it allows us to export two ports the first port is going to be in order for us to have the UI dashboard and the other one is to connect with the OTLP gRPC server which allows us to actually get all of the information from the application and this is going to be really really interesting to see how we can actually utilize it maybe we can there's a possibility in the future where we can actually able to link it to something other than Aspire to take a better to utilize this dashboard maybe we're not really sure the, it's a very interesting uh, update the other one is going to be the dashboard shortcuts so previously there was no shortcuts now there has been full support for keyboard shortcuts under the .NET Aspire dashboard where we're actually able to go through them experiment with the shortcuts from there and actually able to have the full experience with it now through the keyboard shortcut there's a new table metric view where it allows us to actually see the metrics in a table view rather than in a graph view which is going to be really helpful rather than trying to navigate a graph specifically if there's a lot of uh, data flowing in within a table it could make it a lot more easier specifically if they add the capability of exporting this data out other than the dashboards there's enhancement on database and entity framework within the new preview 4 there is a lot more support for databases so there's more tool management support for like mysql mongodb database and php my admin and mongo express so we can see here that they are actually adding more functionalities to the database management and basically the tools that are actually supporting them which is very good to see and as we can see here there's more enhancement when it comes to the enrich methods and changes to the previously existing methods that currently supported that and this enrich methods allows us to actually see more information like a life scope of the request the custom service type configuration and as we can see here from the code sample once we actually configure our connection string and our DB contacts pool, we can actually utilize directly the enriched SQL server contacts by actually appending our DB contacts here in order for us to utilize this. There is also enhancements on the previously existing method for the database. So like the master write count and the retry, so all of that actually comes into place. And one of the really interesting tool is actually if you're trying to implement entity framework migration. So previously, if you try to do entity framework migration when an application was starting up, it was actually giving an error that the connection string was not available. And this was mainly due because the application when it starts, it actually refers to the entity framework rather than the app host from Aspire in order for it to actually run the execution and it tries to do the validation on the connection stream before it actually apply the changes now with aspire there was a changes to that where it actually uh, disabled the connection string validation and directly enable us to apply the migration on the connection string that actually provided through Aspire rather than the api itself and from there we can actually avoid this and we're actually able to implement migration on startup which is really really handy another exciting new enhancement which is going to be another enhancement which is changed to database service resources so we can see here that that now we can actually once we refer to it inside our app host this is how we can actually now refer to it inside our application so we can see directly instead of rely we can utilize the connection string directly which is crm which is defined here and we can actually connect it to our api db context so with the changes to the containers we can see now it's made it a bit simpler so previously we had it to do builder dot add something redis container etc etc now we can just say add redis and through that it makes it easier to actually identify the third-party resources as well there was a 
changes on the abstract resources that has been introduced previously so now there is no concept of abstract resources there's only going to be a representation here within this json for all of the containers and you can actually configure them to utilize them there's now external parameters uh, that actually been supported within the preview for so this for example shows up whenever you're trying to actually deploy the application so if we come here we can see like the external parameters like in this example here the environment variable that we are actually setting up in order for run to our application we don't really know it when we're actually deploying our application but uh, we don't really know it when we're actually building our application but it is going to be useful when we're actually deploying it so we can actually able to change it while we're actually deploying it and this is really helpful in order for us to make our application a bit more flexible there's a new idioms i'm not really sure how you spell that but i think that's how you spell it and this is really really interesting so uh, as we know within our normal web apis we can actually detect if it's being published in a um, developer mode or in production mode and based on that we can execute different logic so in this we can also have the same execution so within our app host we can actually identify if it's running in published mode or not so we can add additional maybe logging object if it's going to be uh, published in developer mode uh, or if it's not we can actually remove a lot of the low level code uh, logs and order for us to actually utilize it in a production environment so this is going to be really interesting to utilize so there is also the introduction of the publish as run as and the as so the run as is basically only when it's running locally so for example if we're trying to add a another resource that we want to utilize and that resource we can actually refer to it as run as and this basically will run as only within the local environment if we do it as publish as once we publish application to the to the cloud or to azure we'd actually take that resource and publish it as we want to do specifying by this id on publish as and as as basically it's going to stay the same no matter if we're running locally or running on the cloud so as we can see for in this example we are utilizing redis and within redis we are utilizing the publish as connection string so basically this connection string will be only available when we actually publish it if we don't if we done it as run as it will be available on the local environment uh, only if we put it as as it's going to stay the same so this is really it's a really cool feature to have and there's some general uh, application improvement so now with the containers you can actually specify the container image that you want and this will allow you to have more control about the images that you want to utilize specifically if you have some kind of a rollback scenario that you want to have specific values of your containers that you want to roll back to this will come really into place where you can actually inject the image name directly here in order for you to have the capability to roll back to previous images i think that's something that's going to be coming within the next uh, versions of aspire uh, split bound mount and volume mount to separate methods so this is when you're actually having to utilize the uh, another container where you can actually have the capability to add volumes and through that you're actually able to utilize them the way you want and the small admin tools when it comes to database management all of them are really welcome so here we can see we can actually utilize uh, mongo express within the new aspire which is really interesting and here you can see that the support is going to be for the wider community rather than only so, uh, supporting microsoft technologies and we have the ability to disable endpoint proxies this is something that we're actually really looking forward to where you can actually have the capability to specify a specific port and then you can actually disable be for it to be proxies on top of that for azure there's a lot of a new enhancement when it comes to resources and components you know you can actually able to have a container resource group mappings where you can actually have your own resource group available on azure and you map it to those containers that you're actually going to be utilizing within aspire if you're interested in, in having a video on how to deploy your, your aspire application to azure please let me know and make sure to have a video to cover that and this is going to be the example of it where you can actually see publish as azure redis so once you do it as publish as azure redis here you're going to be able to have the azure instance of redis available for you within the aspire application which is pretty cool and there's more uh, updates to the infrastructure from the infrastructure side where you can utilize bicep in order for you to create your application and basically it's like an infrastructure as code and you'll be able to utilize that in order for you to build the uh, aspire applications as well as there is more enhancement to the emulator so if you want to utilize blob storage locally there's going to be built-in emulator that aspire can actually benefit from in order for you to run all of these different uh, components that are actually available on azure in order for you to be able to develop locally against them as well there is a, an update for the update manifest within the update manifest now there's going to be a significant overhaul on it where it's new and changes when it comes to primitive so the primitive has been introduced within preview 4 and we actually actually can be able to take advantage of them so once we have created the manifest for example now we want to say uh, we want to uh, publish it there's now the capabilities of actually prompting for parameters so let's say we have something that we don't really want to store in the code like a, some kind of a password some kind of a configuration we can actually have a prompt where we actually enable this so in this example here we have a 
administrative logging, for example, parameter, and this parameter we set as true as a secret, and then basically we utilize this for Postgres. So now, as we can see in this example, when we're trying to actually deploy it, it actually asks you to provide the administrative login, and then once that is done, it actually continues. So you don't have to hard code the credentials anymore inside of it in order for it to actually run. Now we can actually get a prompt in order for us to be able to uh, include the sensitive data. On top of that, there is a lot of enhancement to Visual Studio, etc., etc., and all of the different toolings that are uh, available. And there's a lot of enhancement to the Azure CLI, where we're actually able to utilize all of these new features and enhancements. So that was a quick overview about the changes in Preview 4. So now let's see how we can upgrade our application to the latest version of Aspire. So as we can see here, I'm having my application, which have my app host, my service default, and the other components that it needs. So what I want to do is I want to go to my app host. I'm going to click on New Get Package. And as you can see here, I'm run utilizing my .NET Aspire Preview 3. I'm going to click on Pre-Release. And this should be able to see that this should be upgraded to Preview 9. But around that, I want to go to Preview 4. So I'm just going to click on Upgrade. Yes. So now I'm going to upgrade to Preview 4 from .NET Aspire. And now it should be installed. OK, perfect. So the other one that I want to go to, which is going to be Service Default, again, Manage new get packages. There is some betas here, which I don't really want at this moment in time. And if we click on the manage new get package for the entire solution, we can see I'm already on latest uh, on latest uh, on the latest version, which is preview four. If I go back to my web browser and I take a look at that, we can see that preview four point two four one five six, and this is the same thing two four point one five six. So now that I have this in place, what I want to do is I'm just gonna run my application there's going to be a configuration issue because of i'm uti already utilizing port 5000 somewhere else but that should be fine that will not allow us to not have a full picture so now that my application is running let's try to update everything to the latest version maybe that will help okay service discovery needs to be updated as well and now let's check the telemetry okay so with that let's try to run it again see if that will help usually by updating all of the different components the bugs are fixed and we can actually look so let's do one more thing so let's open our terminal and usually let's try this let's update to the latest version of aspire through our terminal as well and we should be able to see here that we have preview 4 okay so that's stuff that we needed to do previously we needed to update the preview 4 on the cli okay perfect so now it's updated to the latest version so now what I can do is you can go back here and run it. Perfect. We can see it's running on preview four and basically we're running, we're getting the latest version. So now if I open this up, if I go back to my web browser here and we run it from here, we can see that my application is running. This is expected because I have 5,000 running on a different, for a different service locally, which is completely fine. If we take a look at the error, we can see that the port's already in use, which is, I'm expecting that because I'm using it somewhere else. So now let's go back to the resources. We can see that it's a new dashboard is here. We can see the console so that we are actually able to manage so if i click on the back end we can see the ability to see the logs has been enhanced now we can see we have a structured approach when it comes to all of the logs so we can see how they correlate with each other if we go to traces now we are actually able to see the traces of how actually everything runs which is really cool the metrics now has been also enhanced so if i go to back end there's nothing if i go to front end we can see the problems and now this is the new stuff which is going to be the table view which we were able to see all of the information rather than a graph on a table which allows us to actually have a better overview about it and now we can see that my application is running on the latest version as well we have the keyboard shortcut i have and have been enabled and so many other new features just to be aware if you want to update the latest version make sure you update your console then you update your packages because they need to be both of them update at the same time. Other than that, I think the new preview for the .NET Aspire is gonna be really exciting. You can see the different effort that has been put into it and David Fowler has done an amazing job with his team in order for the, to bring this into life. So this was a quick video to discuss the latest versions uh, of .NET Aspire. If you have any questions, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. Again, don't forget to update the resourcing and the tooling from the console, from the terminal before you can actually update the packages. With that said, Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. And if you have any questions, please make sure you put them in the comments down below and have a great day.